like, what in the world is that? I mean, they've never seen anything like it. Hey, this is Jason. Um, here we are. We're going to take a look at the Ranchero. It's crazy. It's the middle of June and we've had rainstorm after rainstorm. Usually Oregon's not like this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do a video in my backyard. We'll try to get some other, other video done uh, for you. But, you know, this is a real cutie pie. 1960 is the first year of the, of the small Rancheros. You remember they were built originally on the Fairlane model but uh, 1960 uh, Ford came out with the Ford uh, Falcon and uh, so they also made a Ranchero and you know these are actually really cool rigs and uh, a lot of people enjoy them and they're pretty solder after these days because you don't you don't really see uh, good condition ones uh, very often this one's pretty decent um, you know really just a nice driver uh, not perfect, but I'll show you different things on it. So we'll just do a little walk around here. You know, the paint is older on it. I'd say it's probably, oh, maybe 20 years old. You'll see some imperfections. Um, I love the way the, the grills on these are. Just really neat looking and uh, definitely has a unique look. They almost kind of have like a European uh, type of look to it. And uh, if you look down the side, you can see back there on the, on the quarter panel, um, on the bed has some little waves and stuff not bad but you can see some little waves and stuff back there and uh, but we'll just walk around here I wanted to show you some of the paint you can see here a little chip on the hood you can see this little cloudiness that's from the clear coat probably starting to fail a little bit it's not peeling off up here but you, you can definitely see the cloudiness and hopefully you can see that in the video really hard to take a picture of you can see it right up here. You can see here on the on the hood, a little chip. Um, let's go ahead and look at this fender. You know, a couple little chips. I can I can see just some little minor minor things. A little little tiny scratch right there. I like the uh, color matched uh, hubcaps, original Ford hubcaps, and uh, wheels. And that's a 13 inch. We actually put a brand new windshield in it. No cracks or anything really hard to find a windshield for these and it's got new rubber gaskets around the windshield as well and I put new rubber gaskets around the doors um, in it and uh, so we'll walk around here you can see the bumper not perfect chrome or anything like that never been chrome but you know decent you know looking um, you'll see here in the the lights all the lights work you can see some little cracks on the lenses and uh, we'll look down here down this side of it too you know again pretty pretty straight you can see a couple little little wobbles but you know nothing major for a nice little driver you know things pretty solid we'll just point up out a couple little scratches here little chips little tiny bubble right there and i don't think that's uh rust i think it's just a little actually some kind of little bubble flaw with the paint um there's a couple little rust bubbles i'll show you on it back back at back here on the uh, quarter panel this here there was actually an antenna here and for some reason i don't know how long ago they did that there was an antenna sticking out um i guess maybe they thought it was cool you'll look here in the bottom of the fenders very clean around the wheel lips a real nice on the front little scratch right there little tiny scratch right there little scratch right there you can see a little imperfection right there. You, know, you look at the door. Looks pretty decent. The rockers on this thing are really nice. You know, you'll see a couple little chips and things, but um, absolutely no rust in the rockers. You'll see some little scratches there. I like how they did the, uh, the locks, little covers. You can see some chipping stuff right there on the paint. Right here is a little Bondo crack, actually. Um, I haven't seen a lot of Bondo on this, and it uh, seems pretty solid. 
but either that's really thick paint or a little bondo crack and uh, right here around the wheel lip you can see some little tiny bubbles forming right there they've actually been there for a long time but um, they are there and you look here below that's actually really nice behind the uh, wheel well and uh, just look down here obviously your gas is there and I'm just looking for little chips little different things right here so I don't this is kind of clear or something kind of ugly there but it is what it is little chips and uh, go ahead and look at the you know the gutter is actually really nice usually these are pretty rusty here and it looks good top of the hood I mean the roof looks in good condition you'll see here actually this rig actually had a um, a canopy on it for years and uh, that was pre prior to me getting it but the guy that I got it from uh, took the canopy off and that's where you're gonna see a little bit of a uh, discoloration I think when they painted it they painted it before with the canopy uh, off of it or on it and they didn't uh, repaint this part and another thing they didn't do right here they didn't paint this because the canopy came came back and uh, these have been repainted here um, but because uh, they took the rails off but you can see here they they missed that and when they took it off you know that's what we were left with and uh, go ahead and look at the back I love the way the back of these look actually kind of looks like a bird I guess it's a falcon but kind of looks like a bird of some sort like a I don't know just kind of reminds me of it maybe you can see it there um, anyways you can see here the tail lights real cool looking almost like a jet style uh, you can see some little cracks and stuff you know jets and stuff are really popular in the early 60s and uh, they wanted to make these look like you know uh, rockets or something you look down the side here looks pretty good right here is they had a trailer plug on it at some point you can see a couple little paint runs as well a little spot here on the on the bumper this plate doesn't go with it if you were uh, back in 1960 and I went to test drive a little rig like this the dealer would have put that plate on there I just put those on there for fun and uh, memorabilia type thing you can see here some of the um, the clear is uh, you can just see the oxidation from it a little bit you can see here here the clear is actually came off a little bit a little chip this here I don't think there's supposed to be two screws there I think it probably attached and some, something went wrong and they put two screws take a look at this tail light a couple little cracks you can see here a little push in from the bumper you can look down the side you know it actually doesn't look too bad you know it looks pretty good you can see here around the wheel lip looks good we'll put it on my lift too so you can see it you can see right here there's a dent they must have backed into something and, and pushed it up there a little bit but you can definitely see some filler and stuff there in that area you can see some little little chips and stuff there but not rusty and a little little crack in the paint right there but overall I mean it looks pretty pretty good just trying to show you stuff that you might not see in photos little tiny bubble right there and uh, we'll go ahead and look at the gutter you know very clean there so hopefully that uh, gives you a pretty good look um, just of the body in general um, you'll look here at the rocker again it's very clean and uh, looks nice but you know for a nice driver this is great and uh, it starts right up we'll start it here in a minute and uh, it's just a uh, it's cute you know and uh, not over restored or anything like that someone will enjoy this little guy okay here we are we're gonna take a look at the interior just wanted to mention uh, to you here you know the key lock I showed you before but the uh, that lock actually doesn't work if you put the key in there it just spins around but you can manually lock the door and uh, 
and when you shut it, it, it locks, and uh, the key works on the other side. So if you had to lock things up, you, you could. Um, anyways, I just wanted to point that out. If you look at the interior, it actually looks really nice. I like the black and white against the red. Very cool, retro looking, and uh, I like the way the dash is and everything. You'll see it has AC, we'll talk about that in a minute. I like the way the steering wheel looks, and uh, door panels look cool uh, too. And um, you can see back here, you got your spare tire, original to the car. I like this little tray actually up here. You can put a little piece of carpet on it. If you had a little wiener dog or something like that, you could let him ride around with you and he'd be the talk of the town. As you see that guy in the Ranchero with a little wiener dog up there. And if you're really brave, you can put a cat in there. But anyways, uh, just wanted to show you the steering wheel and stuff. You'll see some little cracks, you know, around it. The horn actually does work, but it doesn't work on this side. <laughs> works on that side. You can see a little crack there, Ford Falcon. The instrument cluster, you know, it's pretty Spartan in general, And uh, but the odometer works, got 29-131, obviously that's rolled, it's not original, And the uh, but the speedometer does work, and the um, dash lights work, but the fuel gauge doesn't work, and uh, I don't even, I see a little needle there for the temp gauge, but it doesn't work either. You can see some of the knobs are uh, older, you know, and cracked, and, and missing and stuff. You can actually get some of those on eBay if you wanted. Original radio, it doesn't work. And uh, so you can see here, carpet looks real nice. It's got new welting all the way around. You can see in here the door jam. Um, that's the original color. You can see it's kind of an orange um, color. And uh, they painted it kind of a more of a brighter red. And uh, the other thing is, we put new gaskets around the uh, the doors, try to keep her dry inside. And when we put the new windshield in, as I mentioned before, it's got a new uh, gasket. If you look up here, headliner's in pretty good shape. Not perfect. Has a little bit of staining. It's a little short, didn't tuck in up here in the rubber, but um, you know, it's just it's just older. You can see up there, it, the dome light doesn't work. And uh, it's missing its little little chrome bezel that goes over the top. And uh, But anyways, we'll take a look at the uh, the other side. We'll mention that the emergency brake does, does work as well. But um, so it's working. And uh, we'll take a look at the other side and uh, show you the AC and stuff. Okay, here we are on the passenger side. I did want to show you the way the doors open. This one opens nice, and sh but sometimes when they, you just got to give it a little bit of a, more of a push, especially with the new gaskets on it. The other side's like that too, I forgot to show you. But you can look here at the door panel, you know, overall in pretty good shape, and uh, you can see some imperfections and stuff in some of the paint on the door panel, older paint there. And uh, look, go ahead and look in here the in the glove box does have the glove box door in there as well. Go ahead and look at the jams. You know, very clean uh, jams overall. You know, not rusty. Look up here. Let's go ahead and look at the seat. You know, again, over overall pretty nice in general. Um, so the AC unit, it actually does turn on, and Nolan, why don't you go ahead and hop in the driver's seat here real fast. We'll go ahead and turn it on, turn the engine on. You know, uh, you can actually turn on the, the blower when it's, when the engine's not on, but anyways, uh, it's not blowing cold right now, and, uh, but I'll show you, everything's hooked up, so when you... There's the fan on, medium, low, and there's off. You can hear it click and stuff underneath the um, underneath the hood there. So something's happening, and uh, but it just it, it's not blowing cold, and uh, I haven't uh, messed with that or anything. I, there's probably a leak or something uh, that's preventing it, uh, or maybe it just needs to be charged or something like that. But. Um, I know it. I don't know if that one takes the older Freon or not, but it's something I haven't really messed with. 
I can't remember if I showed you on the other side. There's a little uh, hose clamp on there. This, you know, it stays in there and it shifts good. I'm not sure why it's there and I didn't want to take it off, to be honest with you. Here's the ashtray. It's kind of hard to get to because the AC's there. You know, this AC's been in there a long time and uh, no smell of any smoke or anything in here, but um, I imagine they probably put that in here when it was new. And uh, so, anyways, let's take one more look across the dash here. And, uh, you know, overall, I like a little Falcon, like a little Ranchero. They're pretty cool looking. Okay, I want to go ahead and uh, show you a cold start. Um, one thing you'll notice when I turn the key on is the fuel gauge and the temp gauge. One goes to high, one goes to full, and they just hide there the whole time while you're driving it and stuff. And uh, when you turn the key off, then they slowly go back down. Um, they're definitely not working. You can see the oil and the generator light uh, are on, which they should be, and because um, it's not running, so it's not reading oil pressure and it's not reading electricity. Um, but anyways, there's a choke right here. I pulled it just a little bit. Defrost button, wipers, and uh, your lights are right here. And uh, we'll go ahead and start it up, pump the gas twice. It fires right up. You can actually, you can hear the engine. And now we're just going slow. Actually, this is kind of funny. That I had the key turned just a little bit too far. And the... Uh, the gauges were going back down with the temp and the fuel, so I put it back on the on position there, and uh, they went up there like I said. But we'll uh, take it out for a little uh, spin here. And uh, one other thing I want to show you is that this here is the um, for the heater. You just pull it out and you turn it. You can hear the motor running and uh, the frost button. I don't know if it really tells me if it's going, I can feel it up here coming out a little bit. And I know that this is the for the temperature, you can pull for the heat. And this here is pretty fragile, that just broke off there, but uh, just needs new uh, levers on it and stuff. But um, So I'll go ahead and uh, take it out for a little spin and uh, just get some road time on it. take her out for a little spin got it in first gear you know first gear is down reverses up and then up and towards the windshield second you can see it shifts nice we'll go into third you know this thing's not a speed demon I'm in you know the odometer's off a little bit I guarantee you we're not going 40 right now probably about 25 but I would imagine driving it is probably I mean it probably likes 50 55 um, miles an hour you look across here, the wipers, just wanted to show you, they're working good, they work in both speeds, and, uh, but the odometer, speedometer are working, I don't know, you can't see this, but the, uh, you know, when you have the lights on, you got your bright lights, there's a little light in the dash, and, uh, you can also see the blinkers, they're blinking up here as well, and, uh, so, you know, overall, you can hear a little bit of wind noise uh, coming through the doors a little bit, but, you know, not too bad. I mean, the thing's 1960. I can't believe this thing's uh, 40, 50, 57 years old. Pretty amazing. But we'll just cruise around. I'll show you some other stuff and uh, just enjoy the Oregon scenery out here. You know, it's really pretty. You got grass fields and hazelnut uh, orchards out here. Those are really popular. So we'll just cruise around and... Uh, and uh, show you some other stuff in a little bit. Okay, here we are underneath the hood. Just wanted to show you where the little latch was. It's different on each car, but you can see there, 
just right underneath there. Um, it's got a little prop rod. It just goes up to the hood there. I thought this was kind of cool. These are old stickers. Hood rod over there. Then it says hood rod under here. Um, I just thought that was kind of cute. You got the original radiator support. Looks in good shape. And uh, you can see here it says 589. That's actually original chalk mark uh, on this thing. And uh, you don't see that, you know, that often. We uh, did a little engine detail underneath the hood here. And uh, it looks pretty good. And it looks nice. The engine actually was rebuilt before I got it. Uh, we just did a little bit more uh, uh, detailing and stuff. So it looked nice underneath the hood. That's just the way I, I kind of like them to look. The one thing I'll note is it is a 170. Originally, it's what it came with a 144. The intake is original. Um, you can see here the intake is actually part of the head. This is the exhaust manifold. And the intake is uh, CO, which is C is for 60, zero is for 60. Um, just teaching you a little bit about part numbers, which you probably don't care. But if you look down there on the engine block on the side, it says uh, C4OE. And C is for uh, 60 and 4 is for 64. So if it says C7, that'd be 67. If it said C9, that's 69. If it said D1, that'd be 71. Uh, so anyways, uh, you'll look here at the aprons. Very clean. They haven't been hit and look in nice shape. You'll notice a lot of undercoating across the firewall. That wasn't put there to hide anything. It was there uh, when the car was put with the AC. They put it there for insulation and uh, to try to cool the cab, you know, keep the, keep the coolness in. You can see the original VIN number right there. And it also does match the door. And, uh, but you can see here the AC unit. Um, you know, it does turn on. I'll show it uh, to you. You know, but I don't see any fluid moving through the sight, sight glass. So I'm not sure 100% why it's not blowing cold. And uh, the guy that had it before me did have it working it at some point. It's something I haven't messed with. I'm not an AC guy. But at least the, the nice thing is, everything's there. And uh, so, anyways, why don't we go ahead and start it up? You can hear it run. You can, uh, there we go. It just starts right up. Very easy. Usually just two pumps of the gas. Go ahead and rev it up a little bit. You know, it doesn't blow smoke or anything. It's just a nice uh, sounding little motor. Go ahead and rev it up over here on this side. You know, very smooth. Sounds like a little sewing machine. I'm gonna show you the AC uh, unit. Right there, you can see the, the belts on it, but the clutch, there you go. You know, when you turn the AC on, the, the uh, clutch turns off. Go ahead and turn it off. So the clutch does work. I, everything's functional, it's just not blowing cold, so. Anyways, I hope that gives you a, a good idea of it underneath the hood. Um, you know, it's very useful and uh, in pretty good shape. We'll go ahead and show you the lights. All of, all of them work on the outside. We'll go put the headlights. There's the marker lights. Got headlights. Got bright lights. Then we got our blinkers. Got your right. And got your left. And... Uh, We'll hop around here to the back. Okay, here we are. just want to take a look at the uh, back lights. Go ahead and turn your uh, marker lights on, tail lights. Got your tail lights, got brake lights. Then we got blinkers. Got right and left. And then you also notice here that the uh, light works underneath the license plate there. And uh, go ahead and start it up. We'll uh, look at the exhaust here. Go ahead and rev it up a little bit. Sounds good. Hey, here we are uh, underneath the Ranchero. Instead of doing uh, still uh, shots that you'll see in the auction, um, we've been doing a lot of videos underneath. Um, that's the first thing that I look at when I go look at a car. Actually, they, they can look real nice on the outside, but I want to crawl underneath and, and take a look. So. This will just help us to walk around a little bit and uh, just see some different stuff about it that you wouldn't notice in photos. So we'll just start here uh, from the front uh, and go to the back. Um, it's not real uh, pretty underneath, and what I mean, it's not all painted or anything like that, but you'll find out structurally, it's actually in pretty good shape. Um, you can see here, you know, a little surface rust and, and stuff, but you know, the radiator support here, or core support, um, people call it that too 
uh, it looks actually pretty good. It's not not rusty, uh, and what I mean is no holes. Just seems real solid. I haven't seen any accident damage. If you look look over here inside the apron, you know it's very clean. You can see the light. You know back behind there, it all looks good. You can see your frame rail looks in real good shape. You can see your spring perch up there is in, in good shape. And uh, you can see some old undercoating and, and different things. But overall, it, it looks pretty good. Um, you can see here the back side of the, um, the brake cylinder. We put new uh, cylinders up front. And uh, you can look here as well. The hose uh, looks good. No cracks or anything like that. I believe we actually put new hoses on on the on this side. Um, if you look at the the bushings here, you can see a little cracks and stuff. This is the uh, TC rod. Those could probably be replaced uh, down the road, and uh, but it's not uncommon for them to look like that. But you know, those are little maintenance things that you'll want to do. Other things here to look at. You know, the boot here looks looks good. Doesn't look tore on the. Uh, um, ball joint and the lower ball joint actually looks pretty good as well. Um, <clears throat> I'll just look across here. Look here at the bottom of the motor. You know, it looks, um, you know, I haven't really seen any oil leaks or anything. Let me see the flashlight here. You can see a part number. I might have to show it to you later. Oh, there we go. C4OE. The block in this is a um, 170 um, C4 C is for 1960 and then 4 is for 64 so C4 is uh, 64 if it said C5 then it would say um, it would be 65 and uh, the head on this is uh, CO so someone replaced the the block in this in this and uh, so we've got a 170 motor um, in it we'll look back here I'll go ahead and look at the light and the inner apron up here, you know, again, no accident damage. Looks like it has the original fenders and everything, but you know, the support and uh, inner aprons look real nice. You can see the frame rail looks in good shape. Like right here, that's just some undercoating. And uh, look back behind here. You see the tow board. You know, looks good. Again, this is just, you know, some undercoating that's on here the frame rail looks real good and uh, go ahead and look at the the rockers again we're on the pass or driver's side right now a lot of times rockers rust out because these little drain holes and I didn't actually realize that Rancheros had so many drain holes so that's real good but usually these get clogged and uh, that's why you have a lot of rockers that that get rusted out and these rockers look really nice and uh, we'll go ahead and look at the floor the floor had some poor 15 um, put on it before I got it. The floors look real solid. You can just see some undercoating, you know, just coming off there, the original undercoating. But you can see here some um, some black. There's a, probably some little pinholes. You can see a little pinhole there. Um, and sometimes just little drill holes uh, on the floor from the past. But sometimes you'll see a little seeping down from the poor 15. You can see here, the inside rockers look good. If we look here at the bottom floor, on the driver or driver's side again. This gets back behind the bed. Here you can see some little pinholes that were here from the black, from the poor 15, and uh, where it dripped through. And, uh, you know, actually that poor 15 is almost like, you know, it's a resin, but it's almost like steel and uh, makes it real solid. You know, back here looks good. You know, it's not in the position where I'd replace the floors or anything because the floors actually look pretty good. We'll go here to the front floor. You know, the frame rail, again, is really solid looking. Looks real nice. Go ahead and look at the floor here. Inside the rocker looks good. You can see actually some little pinholes there was probably some little bit of rust that was right here. Some resin that they put to protect the floors. Go ahead and look at the floor over here. You know, everything looks real good. You'll see some uh, on the transmission here as well. 
You can see some little seepage. Again, it's not leaking on the floor. You know, it's just an older transmission. I believe that is the original transmission on it, but you'll see some little seeping here from the seal. But, uh, you know, it's just, just an older rig. You can see the transmission mount. The rubber is cracked there. And again, that's, you know, if you just spend some time, you know, during the winter months and stuff, you can just replace some of those, those bushings and stuff pretty easy to do. You can see it's got single exhaust as well. And it comes all the way from the front out to the back. You know, you think that that would be typical, but a lot of times people drop it off in front of the front wheel, uh, back wheels here. So this is continued all the way back, new muffler on it. Again, we'll look at the frame rail. It looks real solid in here in the back. You look here, this is important where the, the shock goes up in there. It's not rusty. Looks very clean. Same thing over here on the driver's side. You'll see this little hole. That's not a rust hole. It's just a little weep hole in case water collected there. That's on both sides. We'll look here at this frame rail. Again, it looks very, very clean. Here you can see that's just some un under old undercoating. You know, not, not rusty. I guess I should have showed that on the camera. Just old, old stuff coming off there. You can see this frame rail here. Looks very good. New gas line uh, hose right there. You know, the gas uh, gauge isn't working and I haven't tested it. I don't know if it's from this. Everything's hooked up or it's just the gauge. Look up underneath here. You can see there's no accident damage. It hasn't been hit in the back or anything like that. And uh, you can see the spring perch looks good. Trunk drop off looks pretty good on both sides. You know, overall it looks looks pretty good. We'll go uh, come around here to the the bottom of this quarter. You'll see photos, but. They got uh, hit in right here a little bit. You'll see some, some filler that got cracked there. And we'll look here at the rocker. You know, it looks real good. You can see the, the drains. We'll look here around this wheel lip. You see a little, I don't know if that's a factory weld mark, but you can see a little weld uh, right there. But it doesn't look like it's been been messed with. On the other side, I'm not going to walk over there because you'll see it in the photos when I walk around. There's some little bubbles on that on that quarter, but we'll finish looking here. Rockers are always the biggest concern on a classic car to me, but uh, all the drains look good. And no bubbling in here at all. So, anyways, uh, hope that helps you out a little bit and uh, everything looks in pretty good shape. You know, it is a little crusty underneath. Um, it's kind of a strong term but I mean it's it's not perfect it's a car that's been driven and uh, hopefully that helps you so if you got questions and stuff make sure to call me you can email or uh, make comments on on uh, bring a trailer there but this is a pretty cool little ranchero you don't see him very often uh, first year of this body style in the Falcon line so anyways thank you